I thought it was the most beautiful city that I'd ever seen in the world. It was just like a fairy tale. It had not been uh, destroyed or anything by the war. It was, it was just beautiful. It was just stunning how beautiful it was. But Prague would soon be home to one of the ugliest political events of the Cold War, the Prague Spring. Years after the fall of Nazi Germany, Alexander Dubček, the Czechoslovakian Communist Party leader, began a liberalization movement to reform the socialist state. Dubček's attempt to introduce free market economies, freedom of the press, and opening their borders to the West did not go over well in the Soviet Union. On the evening of August 20th, 1968, the Soviets made their move. Meanwhile, more than 4,500 miles away in Ithaca, New York, a man by the name of Carl Husa was intently listening to his radio. So Mr. Husa had a commission from uh, Ithaca College, which is in the same town, to write a piece. Husa was born in Prague. After studying art and music in Paris, he came to America as a composer and conductor. He found himself and his music exiled from Czechoslovakia until 1991. This event in Prague happened, so he started to write. This piece is the most performed piece of the 20th century, with like 35,000 performances worldwide. The theme of the piece, Ye Warriors of God, is an ancient Czech battle hymn, one that speaks of resistance and hope. It's used in several other pieces by Czech composers. It's like the unofficial national hymn. We only hear like the first half of the hymn. It's never heard completely. And it slowly puts things together. You hear the piccolo symbolizing this bird waking up and, and saying, uh-oh, something's happening. There's, I can hear something rumbling in the distance. Again, this um, uh, program aspect of, of Soviet tanks are coming. And it works its way up until the fanfare and that's like. At 4 a.m. in the morning, the Soviets and four other Warsaw Pact countries invaded Czechoslovakia. With over 500,000 troops, they stormed across the country. Johnson was first introduced to Husa in 1970. You have to go to the airport, pick him up, and want you to take care of him for the week. So I did. I picked him up, and we're driving back up the mountain. And I'm driving, and I'm talking, and I'm waving, and he keeps saying, yes, but keep your eyes on the road. Yes, but keep your eyes on the road. <laughs> it was really a great time. We had several dinners that week. We went walking in the woods, and I just happened to have my score to the piece there, and so we, we again talked about what he was thinking and what he put in, what he told me. This is what I was thinking. I mean, it's, it's not in the score, but it's what he told me. This is, I was thinking this. I don't know any other composer that writes with a sim similar kind of language who can communicate with an audience like Husa. One feels and this sense of musical expression, of longing, of, of deep pain, and emotional pain. He uses both graphic notation and pitch bending, so he'll have you play an F flat, but play it sharp. One hears a lot of density, especially rhythmic density. The effect is, is, is something that's not foreign to the ear. It's just dense. I started a correspondence with him because that was before computers and email. And, and interestingly enough, about 20 years ago, one of his letters was fetching $200 at uh, the uh, anti antiquarian places in New York. Johnson has more than 50. He was the first major composer that I spent a lot of time with. He's a very gentle man, never pushed people away, always had time to talk to students and young people, and just our conversations about all of music, about life in general, about the, the respect for life. His conducting, he was an immaculate conductor. 
all of those things had a, had a profound influence on me. Yeah, I would say he's one of the two or three most influential people in my life. On Wednesday, April 3rd at 7.30 p.m. in the Great Hall, under the direction of Dr. Ronald Johnson, the Northern Iowa Wind Symphony will perform Music for Prague as well as three other historic Czech pieces. I think one will be imbued with Czech elements, Czech heritage. And by the time one hears this music, I think that they will have a point of reference for this music. I think they will be quite moved. I think it will be difficult to hear. But if one can resist the temptation to try to figure it out and just feel the expression coming, just allow it to wash over you as a, a listener, I think they'll be profoundly moved.